I don't want to make my uncle mad because he could be, uh, well, he can be scary, vindictive, paranoid, uh, and violent. Scary, vindictive. Wait, sorry. Uh, uh -huh. no, 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 none of this. Uh, I'm not actually saying that yet. Would you like this meeting to be on background? You can't say I said anything. But you did. So I rewatched both seasons of Succession with the intention of doing a video on the hilariously weird poetry in the show's dialogue. You know, stuff like, What up, Pricklicks? It's me, Dr. Moron. I'm a ding-dong doodlebug dipshit with a tit mouse dick and my dad hates all of you. Fucky go bye-bye. How was that? Was that good? And while there is plenty of majestically profane wordplay to celebrate, watching the show all in one sitting like that, I, I couldn't help but recognize some deeper themes also to do with language and speech that kept popping up again and again. Yeah, it was words. Words are just, uh, what? Nothing. Complicated airflow. What I found was that Succession is an extended exploration of this statement, but in the form of a question. The show wants to know, are words just nothing? Gusts of complicated airflow that you can't really use to understand who someone is or what they mean. Well, in a lot of cases, yes. Succession is packed with examples of words that have absolutely no meaning at all. I don't at this time recall anything that at that time would have caused me any real concern. Lester was a man. And when a man dies, it is sad. All of us will die one day. In this case, it is Lester who has done so. These are words designed to be empty so that they can fulfill the act of communicating when saying something is required without making the speaker responsible for content. You hear this kind of stuff a lot in politics and business. Sometimes it's necessary to be cagey since statements from powerful people can affect the world. Other times, jargon is just rapping on bullshit. Family ownership and corporate continuity in the digital age. Uh, whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> All these nothing words are a form of insincerity. And in this show, this world, this family, insincerity is the rule not the exception. That doesn't mean all words are empty, only that, for the most part, words have a very flimsy relationship to their literal meaning. I'm thankful for all the love Roman has shown to me and for never being selfish or self-centered or egocentric or neurotic or unfaithful. For Logan Roy and his family, words are just the thinnest top layer of communication, concealing an ocean of feelings, motives, and other things that can't be said aloud. Sarcasm at Thanksgiving is par for the course, and that's only one of many ways people can mean the opposite of what they say. You want to abandon Honeymoon? No, I mean, no, I don't want to. You? No. Huh. I don't want to. No. Do you? I just came to say how sorry I was to hear about your dad. Well, it's so kind of you to do it in person when you could have just called. This undercurrent is something the characters, especially Logan's three children, have learned to be hypersensitive to. Sincerity is always suspicious. If it's not sarcasm, it must be disguising a hidden motive. I think you're a super talented superstar, and I, I love you. Oh, you're such a fucking bitch. It makes sense that Kendall, Roman, and Shiv are so guarded. The biggest presence in their lives, their father, is lying to them all the time. Another form of nothing words. Wouldn't you say the thing that's not, that's a lie? Logan lies with abandon, and as a result has created an atmosphere of stifling paranoia. Please, I want you to speak freely. Dad, I think it is possible that you have sometimes somewhat chilled the atmosphere of free-flowing debate. Words to him are just tools to gain advantage, and they can be discarded as easily as they're said. Take away this cold utility and words become meaningless and confusing to him. Have you told the others? The others? The kids. No. Is there an advantage? Uh, no, I mean just to, you know, just to, to tell them. Oh. Sure. This profoundly cynical outlook is the result of living in a world in which words have only temporary meaning. Promises made today are void tomorrow. Words are here, then gone. It's kind of a, a superpower, isn't it? If you can lie to someone like that, to their face. 
I mean, I know you're lying, but I still find you very plausible and appealing. The most extreme form of this is gaslighting, giving words meaning, then violently ripping that meaning away. But the thing about me is that I'm a terrible, terrible prick. I, don't have I got you again. I just got you. <laughs> Fuck me, man. Your face. Pals. Yes? Yeah. Would you kiss me? What? Would you? Kiss you? If I asked you to. <laughs> Come on. I'm joking, I'm joking. In this way, words can be meaningless while simultaneously having incredible power. They can have no link to the truth, but influence people's actions, the world's actions. If you say them forcefully enough, words can become the truth, or at least that's what Logan believes, both in his business life and his personal one. We're gonna be the number one media conglomerate in the world. Did I even make contact? Um, I don't... Because that's not something I do. The rest of the characters aren't as shameless and ruthless as Logan is. At times, they seem genuinely scared of the power words can have. Look, I'm saying this, but I don't believe it. I'm, I'm just, I'm saying it because this is the time we're all saying things. And you don't want to hear... No, I don't want to hear least... anything, Greg, because it was a misunderstanding, okay? Well, I saw what I saw. You shut up! I just said shut up. Shut the fuck up. All right, but I think you should know no, what shut, I saw. Shut the fuck up, Greg. You want to talk to each other in your meeting? Okay. Talk about okay. the big shit. Oh. Yeah, we can talk about the we big shit. We can talk about <laughs> we our feelings. <laughs> Ultimately, Logan's willingness to lie and manipulate has done great harm to his children's ability to communicate honestly and to form relationships based on trust, on saying what you mean. It's to the point that when someone does manage to genuinely express themselves, it cuts like a knife. I wonder if the sad I'd be without you would be less than the sad I get from being with you. You know, I was astonished re-watching this show how thoroughly the creators scrutinize language, its power and its content, or lack thereof. I think the attention to this theme actually makes for the unique and uniquely funny cadence the show has, which drew me to look closer in the first place. Succession is about a lot of things, but what it may be interested in above all is... Fucking words. Fucking words. <laughs> Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. This episode was brought to you by Squarespace. If you don't know, you can use Squarespace to make beautiful websites for anything that you might need. A personal site, a wedding website, a site for your business, portfolio, whatever. And in just a few clicks, you can have that website up and running. Their design team has crafted amazing templates that work on computer browsers and on mobile. And they switch perfectly between the two. You can integrate your own photos and videos with just a few clicks, and you can even link your social accounts so that you can auto post to Twitter and Facebook all from within Squarespace. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash nerdwriter for 10% off your first purchase. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time.